Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Let A, B, and C be sets. Then A times B set minus C is equal to A times B set minus A times C. Now, we're trying to prove that two sets are equal. So what we're going to do is we're going to prove that this set is a subset of this set, and then we're going to prove this set is a subset of this set. Let's start out by proving this set is a subset of this set. Right? What that means is, is we're going to prove that every element of this set belongs to this set. So give me an arbitrary element of this set. I'll call it x comma y. Our whole goal from here is to show that x comma y lies in this set. Now, what does it mean for x comma y to be an element of this set? Well, we're an element of a Cartesian product. So what this means is, is that the first coordinate is an element of the first set, and the second coordinate is an element of the second set. So x is an element of a, and y is an element of b set minus c. And then since y is an element of b set minus c, this tells us that y is an element of b, and y is not an element of c. And now we see that x is an element of a, and y is an element of b. Right? These two facts tell us that x comma y is an element of the Cartesian product a times b. However, because y is not an element of c, this means it is not the case that both x is an element of a and y is an element of c. So the ordered pair x comma y is not an element of a times c. Right? There's no way that x comma y could be an element of a times c. Because if instead x comma y was an element of a times c, we would have that x is an element of a and y is an element of c. But we know that y is not an element of c. So, yeah. So we see that our ordered pair x comma y is an element of a times b, but not an element of a times c. So these two facts together tell us that x comma y must be an element of a times b set minus a times c. So putting this together, we see that under the assumption x comma y is an element of a times b set minus c, it follows that x comma y is an element of a times b set minus a times c. Since x comma y was arbitrary, this shows that every element of this set belongs to this set. In other words, we've shown that this set is a subset of this set. So now that we've shown this set is a subset of this set, now we're going to show this set is a subset of this set. Right? In other words, we're going to show that every element of this set belongs to this set. Well, to do that, give me an arbitrary element of this set. I'll call it p comma q. What does it mean for p comma q to be an element of this set? It means that p comma q is an element of a times b, but not an element of a times c. Now, since p comma q is an element of a times b, this tells us that p is an element of a and q is an element of b. But what does it mean for p comma q to not be an element of a times c? It means it is not the case that both p is an element of a and q is an element of c. And from De Morgan's laws, this is equivalent to saying p is not an element of a or q is not an element of c. So this is what it means for p comma q to not be an element of a times c. It means p is not an element of a or q is not an element of c. But since p is an element of a, this eliminates the possibility that p is not an element of a. So we must have that q is not an element of c. And now we see that q is an element of b and q is not an element of c. These two facts tell us that q is an element of b set minus c. And now we see that p is an element of a and q is an element of b set minus c. So 
the ordered pair P comma Q is an element of A times B set minus C. So putting this together, we see that under the assumption P comma Q is an element of A times B set minus A times C, it follows that P comma Q is an element of A times B set minus C. Since P comma Q was arbitrary, this means we have shown every element of this set belongs to the set. In other words, we have shown that this set is a subset of this set. So we have shown this set is a subset of this set, and this set is a subset of this set. Together, that tells us that these two sets are equal. And that is exactly what we wanted to prove. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.